Hi guys, welcome to Into Boxing. I'm Melissa and I'm joined by Johnny Fisher, the Romford Bull at the Cameron McGee Fight Week. Johnny, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks Melissa. Um, nice and relaxed, prepared, and uh, looking forward to Saturday night when my supporters are going to be in the O2 and we're going to try and put a performance on for them. Do you know what? It's been mentioned so many times already, uh, but it would be, you know, remiss of me not to mention it. You've obviously sold a ridiculous number of tickets. So you walking into the arena on Saturday, you know that a huge percentage of that that crowd is going to be backing you. How does that make you feel? It does. It, I feel very proud. I feel honoured. I feel grateful for the support I've got. And a lot of people have actually messaged me and said, "Oh, I didn't realise I'd get tickets through you. I've done them through the through the O2 website from the uh, StubHub or whatever it was." So I'm going to have a lot more than I've sold 12. But there'll be about, I reckon, about 1400, 1500 there for me to support. So I'm very grateful and very humbled by it. It's absolutely amazing. Like, yeah. as I said, a ridiculous number of tickets. I can't imagine anyone else selling nearly as many. Um, where does that support come from? It comes from the fact I went to university. I've got a lot of mates down there. I, was, I, I had a good good time there, and people people want to support me from that. I had a couple of fights down there, and people obviously watched and they've seen the progression and they want to come to a matchroom show. Um, my old rugby mates, um, people where I live in Romford, people get behind each other. My dad's got a lot of people who follow him and support him, and my brothers as well, and people from South London as well, people from up north. It's all over the country already, which is great. So um, it's not just Romford and Essex and Exeter, it's people up and down as well. It doesn't hurt that you're an extremely nice guy as well. No, that's important. That's the most important thing. You've always got to be humble. 100%. So obviously, when the Dillian White um, situation occurred with his shoulder injury, um, you put your name forward to face Otto Wallen. That was a brave move. Yeah. What was your thoughts behind it? I don't want to refund 1,200 tickets. That was my <laughs> fault. I really don't want to do that. But also, the more I thought about it, because like, I, I got the news and I was like, it's not going to be on. An hour later, I was like, I can fight Otto Wallen. I can do it. I can fight him over eight rounds. I've got a chance. It's a very small chance, but if I, did, I wouldn't go in a fight if I didn't think I could win it. And I, why not? If I could land a punch on any heavyweight in the division, it's going to cause him trouble. So. Listen, I know I'm a huge underdog in that fight and most likely going to get beat, but rather than let my fans down and not be a show, I've got nothing to lose. I'll give what I want in a, a good few rounds. So, um, you've obviously had lots and lots of sparring experience facing some very, very big names in the division. Can you name some of the guys that you face sparring? Yeah, well, I've done lots of good sparring with Joe Joyce primarily, Dave Allen, Tyson Fury, Daniel Dubois, Fabio Wardley. So I've, I've had a good base of people I've been, I've been sparring. I was scheduled to spar Derek Chisora, but it just didn't fit my, uh, my plan and my training with Mark Tibbs and set out. But hopefully after this fight we can get some scheduled in. And I think also with Dillian White as well, I've got some scheduled in. So that's how you get better as well. It's not just through your amateur experience, but learning professional style of sparring, that can also improve you as well. Well, this is exactly what I was going to say, because you haven't had the, the largest amateur no. pedigree. So actually, a lot of your experience, your valuable experience, will be taken from those sparring sessions. 100%. And when you're facing these huge names quite early on in your pro career, that's going to make a big impact. It does. It does make a huge impact. But obviously, you can't replace ring experience, fight experience. I've got to get that as well. But I've definitely noticed the difference with sparring these top guys. I mean, you couldn't ask for better sparring than Tyson Fury. He's the best heavyweight on the planet. And I've been sparring him and he said he's given me good praise and his dad was very impressed with me. So I'm very grateful for that. So we've seen that the WBC have ordered that um, Dillian White is to face Tyson Fury next. Yeah. He's the mandatory. What's your predictions? Listen, I'm a Tyson Fury fan, I'm a Dylan White fan, I'm a boxing fan before anything. So, um, this is going to be a diplomatic answer, isn't it? No, I think Tyson Fury will win, <laughs> I do think that. But it's very hard to write someone like Dylan White off, because he's got that... I saw Wilder and Fury have got it, that, that never, never say die attitude, that, that killer inside them that they don't want to give up. Dylan White's definitely got that as well. So even when Dylan White's in trouble, I think he said it in another interview somewhere, he will swing it out and he'll give it his all. So it's going to be an interesting fight still. And I think Dylan White can get in trouble, but, but I think the class and the, the experience and the, the overall pedigree, not pedigree, but the boxing skill will be with Tyson Fury. I think it's the full package. So it's the nature of heavyweight boxing though, isn't it? Yeah, that's why, yeah. that's why we watch the heavyweights. Yeah. Well, Johnny, look, I'm very excited to see you perform on Saturday Thank night. You. Thank you for taking the time to speak to Thank us. Thank you for talking to me, Melissa. Thank you.
Hey guys, welcome to Into Boxing. This is Melissa and I am joined by none other than a lady who absolutely doesn't need an introduction. Miss Mary McGee, how are you doing? How are you? I'm not bad, thank you. How are you? You are so pretty. Coming from you, that is a massive oh, problem. Good. You look great. <laughs> I think that's one of the first things I said when you walked in. I was like, Mary looks fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> How are you feeling? Obviously, you're headlining a huge show live on DAZN. How are you feeling? I'm excited. I'm happy. I mean, this is a moment that I've always waited for. So I'm just enjoying the opportunity, the moment that I'm in. I'm, I'm enjoying it. And I'm just being myself. I mean, it's really, your personality is really coming across. It's something that I picked up on immediately yesterday at the workout. You just seem absolutely in your element. Are you enjoying it? I am. I mean, we are here to entertain. It's, it's when you like, reach the pinnacle, when you reach your moment, you're supposed to bring out who you are and be yourself, and that's what I'm doing. I don't mean no disrespect to nobody, but I want to enjoy myself. I don't want to just sit and say, yeah, you need to fight. No, I want to win. I came to beat you. May the best woman win the fight, but I feel that I'm the best woman. So this is a, it, it's an incredible opportunity because actually it's a tournament that's taking place. So the, the first fight is between yourself and Chantal Cameron. You have the IBF title. Yes. She has the WB. See, See. Yeah. Um, and obviously the ring, the ring magazine title is on the line as well. Right. So it's it's huge. And then there's a there's another fight happening between two other people in the same division, um, and it's all going to lead to a undisputed. It's the road to undisputed. Do you want all of those belts? I definitely do because that means a, a living for me and my son. Like a, like a lot of people look at it as. I just want the belts. I want to win fights. I want to stay on top. I want to keep growing because this is how I take care of my child. So for me, yes, I want to win, but I want to make it to the top so I can continue to take care of my child. You've been around for a while as a pro boxer. Uh, 14, 14, 15 years, if I'm not mistaken. 21. As a I pro. was an amateur. Oh, as a pro, as a yeah. Pro, yeah, yeah. As a pro, yeah. Uh, but obviously, yeah, boxing for 21 years, you have a wealth of experience. Um, what's your record? My record? 27 and 3 with 15 knockouts. You know, a lot of experience on you. What are the, some of the biggest lessons you've learned from your fights? Well, I learned my biggest lessons from losses. Um, I've, I've learned little from victory, but I learned so much from defeat because nobody likes to be defeated. And you have to go back and research yourself, research your soul, research your mind. And when you do that, it makes you a better fighter. If you had a message for Chantel Cameron ahead of Saturday night, what would it be? Let's put on a show, baby. Let's, you know, let's go out there and give it our all. I want her to bring her 100% best game. I want to bring my 100% best game. And we're going to put a show on. We got to put, we got to put women boxing on the map. Me and her. We, be, we replaced a heavyweight fight that never happens and I hope she's looking at it in the same way that I am we have to show them that we belong here what a moment for female boxing what a moment what a moment we have to we have to prove that this wasn't just a fluke a waste of time you know and woman to woman I can tell you I'm sure you will prove that I'm very excited to see you guys before on Saturday night thank you thank you Mary